Welcome to RBC's Markets in Motion podcast, recorded September 9th, 2024. I'm Lori Calvacina, Head of U.S. Equity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets. Please listen to the end of this podcast for important disclaimers. Three big things you need to know. First, Friday's jobs report added to investors' uncertainty on the labor market, but the data point that concerned us from last week was the spike in tech layoffs in the Challenger report. Second, election uncertainty has persisted, with policy getting greater attention from both sides. We run through our U.S. equity market read-throughs from Trump's economic speech last week. Third, in our discussion of other updates on our high-frequency indicators, we review what we're watching in terms of potential near-term downside levels for the S&P 500, sentiment, and semis. If you'd like to hear more, here's another six minutes. Now let's jump into the details. We'll start with takeaway number one. Employment uncertainty has grown after Friday's jobs report, but the spike in tech layoffs in the Challenger report spooked us the most on stocks. RBC's economics team noted that while the report doesn't point to a sharp contraction in the labor market, it also gave no indications that the broader cooling trend, which is not welcomed by the Fed, has in any way run its course. From our seat in U.S. equity strategy, we generally agree with the idea that the jobs report is still consistent with cooling and normalization as opposed to an economy on the cusp of recession. That being said, we were a bit spooked by some of the details in the Challenger report that came out earlier in the week. The overall level of layoffs moved up in August but remained well below the spikes associated with past recessions and was even a bit below the moves higher seen in 2023, 2024, and 2015. What did catch our attention was the spike in tech layoffs, which wasn't as bad as those seen in late 2022 and early 2023, but otherwise rivals some of the worst spikes this industry has seen over time. This primarily worries us in regards to the tech sector itself and broader market by way of the rotation trade. Though layoff announcements moved up slightly in a few other industries in that report, they were generally mild versus history. Moving on to takeaway number two, election uncertainty persists with policy getting greater attention. We continue to see the U.S. election as a key challenge that the equity market needs to work through in the months ahead due to the uncertainty that the event has injected into the outlook. We do usually see a pullback in the S&P 500 in September and October of presidential election years with a rebound after. Thinking about today specifically, a number of companies referred to this idea that the election has injected some uncertainty into the outlook in their recent earnings calls. Meanwhile, Harris has pulled ahead of Trump in the predicted betting market and RCP polling average, but the race still looks quite close on these data sets, as well as in the polling for the swing states. We do believe the stock market has been paying attention to the event, given the alignment we've continued to see between S&P 500 performance and expectations that Trump will win in betting markets. One of the primary things the stock market cares about on the election is policy, specifically domestic policy. And investors have been getting new information on the leanings of both Harris and Trump in recent weeks. In our latest report, we've recapped our early thoughts on the stock market read-throughs of Trump's domestic policy agenda as described in his speech to the Economic Club of New York last week. We think it's premature to put on any significant sector or industry trades based on the ideas being debated by either candidates, particularly since we expect Congress to be split, leaving little room for major new laws. Nevertheless, here's what's jumped out. First, Trump's linking of a lower corporate tax rate of 15 percent to domestic production was something we hadn't heard before, and we confess we aren't entirely sure what companies would be eligible for the lower corporate tax rate Trump discussed after his speech on Thursday or how the S&P 500 would be impacted in terms of profitability. If we were to take down the effective tax rate by 6 percent in our earnings model on the S&P for 2025 to approximate the Trump proposal, we estimate our EPS forecast could rise by more than 7 percent. After Thursday's speech, however, we no longer think that's the right way to think about the math, as we suspect different companies, industries, and sectors could be impacted differently. Our second takeaway, Thursday's speech, gave us a better sense of which sectors and industries we should be watching closely from a Trump perspective. Industrials and materials remain obvious ones to monitor, given Trump's attention to the manufacturing economy, rescinding unspent IRA money, and tariffs, which all got a lot of attention. Others include energy. Even though we knew this sector was in focus for Trump, we're still surprised by the emphasis on expanding production in his remarks. Home builders is another. We found the comments Trump made on expanding housing affordability and supply interesting, given the focus on the issue by Harris of late. Tech and AI and utilities also jumped to mind. We found Trump's comments on the U.S. needing to dominate AI and the need for more electricity to make it happen noteworthy. Healthcare also jumped out to us, but that's because it was barely mentioned in the speech, suggesting to us it's not a high priority there. 
Similarly, even though financials has tended to be viewed as a Trump trade, it's worth noting that there was also virtually no discussion of this sector that we can recall in the speech on Thursday, aside from the potential link to the broad desire for deregulation. Tuesday's debate provides an opportunity for investors to get more insights here, but only if the moderators choose to dig in. We'll wrap with takeaway number three. What else jumps out from our high-frequency indicators? The decline in the S&P 500 so far in September of 4.25% is right in line with the five-year average full month return for the index in September and the full month September index decline in 2023. If the September pullback in the S&P 500 does continue, we'll be keeping a close eye on the index around 5,100, which would represent a 10% drawdown from the July high and decline in percentage terms similar to the fall of 2023. We see scope for further downside or at least choppiness near term given the five big pressures we've been highlighting, seasonality, sentiment, the election, the typical market volatility around rate cuts and rotation. For now, we still think any further damage would be contained within a 10% garden variety pullback range, but if hard landing fears continue to escalate, the risk of a growth scare decline in the 14 to 20% range, similar to 2010, 2011, 2015, 16, and 2018, will also admittedly rise. Something else that jumped out on our indicators last week, REITs, utilities, staples, and financials are outperforming the most within the S&P 500 so far in 3Q, followed by healthcare. These all represent classic defensive parts of the U.S. equity market, along with one big pocket of cyclical value. Other than the fact that these are natural beneficiaries of the rotation out of mega cap growth, two things jump out at us about these sectors. First, financials has almost always outperformed in the second half of presidential election years. And second, most of these classic defensives, X REITs, tend to outperform following first Fed rate cuts. Moving on to sentiment, we were surprised to see that investor sentiment and positioning got even more stretched last week. On AAII, the four-week average for net bulls rose to 21.5%, only slightly below the one standard deviation mark after the weekly data point came in at 204 Lastly, we're keeping an eye out for opportunities in some parts of the U.S. equity market that are getting hit hard right now. One of these that we're watching closely is semi and semi equipment. Despite the pain that's been inflicted on this space, it still looks problematic on our industry work. Valuations for the median stock in this industry in the Russell 3000 remain elevated and earnings revision trends remain negative. That's all for now. Thanks for listening and be sure to reach out to your RBC representative with any questions. This content is based on information available at the time it was recorded and is for informational purposes only. It is not an offer to buy or sell or a solicitation, and no recommendations are implied. It is outside the scope of this communication to consider whether it is suitable for you and your financial objectives.